Hello students, today we will discuss about the joints of the thorax. Now when you will see the joints of the thorax, the skeleton of the thoracic wall consists of the following bones. So these bones are actually going to form the different joints of the thorax. So what these bones are, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae which are present in the posterior part of the your chest cavity or chest wall. Then you will have the 12 pairs of the ribs along with the costal cartilages and lastly you will have a big bone which is present in the center is known as a sternum. So when you will see the joints of the thorax you, you are basically talking about the joints formed by the vertebrae which are present posteriorly. On the side you have the rib cage and anteriorly is the sternum. So what are the joints which are formed by these three sets of the bone? So this is a long list of the joints which are formed by these bones. First is costovertebral joint. As the name itself suggests, it is a joint between the rib and vertebrae. So whenever you are using the word costo, it means we are talking about the rib. And when we are using the word chondral, we are actually talking about the cartilage. So what are the joints you will see? Now here, if we will go posteriorly, the posterior end of the ribs are making joint with the vertebra and you know that vertebras are having the body and transverse process. So the joint with the body is known as costovertebral. The joint with the transverse process is known as costotransverse. Apart from that, the joint on anterior end of the rib. That means these are the anterior end of the ribs. So this is the cartilage of the rib which is known as costal cartilage. So here you are having the two joint. One is the joint between the rib and its cartilage which is known as costochondral joint. Then you will have the joint between the cartilages. These are present in the lower part of the chest wall. Then you will have the joint between the cartilage and the sternum which is known as chondrosternal and then you will have two midline joints anteriorly which are the manubriosternal and ziphysternal joint and one midline joint posteriorly is known as intervertebral joint. So these are the joint which are known as joints of the thorax, clear? So now we will see these joint one by one. First is the costovertebral joint. At the back, now this is the first thing which you have to understand that whenever you are talking about the costovertebral joint, you know that vertebral column present in the posterior aspect. So this joint but obviously present on the posterior part or at the back. So when you will see the, at the back, the ribs articulate with the thoracic part of vertebral column. Now, when you are talking about the thoracic part of the vertebral column, you are having the joint with the ribs at two places. One is with the body and when the joint is formed with the body, that uh, most of the books are labeling it as a costovertebral joint. But apart from that, posteriorly you have the joint by the tubercle of your uh, rib with the transverse process of the vertebrae and that is known as costotransverse joint. Now here in this image, if you will see, you can appreciate that this is a typical thoracic vertebrae and this is a typical rib. Now on the posterior side, this white arrow is suggesting the joint with the body of your vertebrae and this joint is basically labeled as costovertebral joint. Now you can see that there is a one more joint on both the side and this joint is between the your rib tubercle and transverse process. So this is the transverse process of your vertebrae and this is the tubercle of the rib and this joint is known as costotransverse joint. But some books include both of these variety in the costovertebral joints. So if you are having this question in exam, costovertebral joints, you can write both of the variety, the joint with the vertebral body and joint of the rib with the 
transverse process clear but the site of the rib will become uh, separate now if you are talking about this area then the head of the rib is making joint and if you are talking about this joint then the tubercle of rib is making the joint clear now what about the costovertebral joint so costovertebral joint in this lecture i included only the part of the head which is making joint with the vertebral body so what are the structures articulating in this joint articular facet on the head of the rib and the costal facet on the body of your thoracic vertebrae so this is the important thing to understand that when we are talking about the costovertebral joint you should have the two component costo means rib and vertebra means thoracic part of the vertebral column now when you are talking about the costal component you have to understand that the head of the rib is having the facets and these facets are going to form the joint when we are talking about the vertebral com component you have to keep this thing in mind that the body of thoracic vertebrae also having the facets which are known as costal facets of the vertebrae and these costal facets are the characteristic feature of the thoracic vertebrae the head of the typical rib possess two articular facet now this is the important question for your exam as well as your viva that when you will see the rib now this is the image of a typical rib and this is the head now when you will enlarge the head you will find that this is having the two part this is the upper facet of the head of the rib and this is the lower facet of the head of the rib and between these two head you are having a projection is known as crest so here also you can appreciate that this projection which is dividing the head into the two articular surfaces this is the upper facet and this is the lower facet which are going to form the joint with the vertebral body so the first and most important concept is that the head of the rib is having the two facets and these facets are separated by a ridge and the facets are sloping away that means they are not vertical they are sloping away from the ridge so you can see that the direction of the both the facets are sloping away from the ridge the each facet make a small synovial joint with the demi facet of vertebral body now what does it mean that demi means half so what you are able to appreciate that on the vertebral body you will find half facet on upper and lower part of the vertebral body so that you can appreciate in these images now here you can see that this is the side view of a thoracic vertebrae now on this side view of the thoracic vertebrae now this is the first thoracic vertebrae now on the first thoracic vertebrae you are able to see a complete facet because you will realize that the first rib the first rib is purely purely articulate with the first thoracic vertebrae it is not having articulation with the your upper rib, upper vertebrae and means c7 that means its its rib this rib is having a single articular head the head of first rib is not divided by any ridge what is the question that you will see the first thoracic vertebrae on the side of first thoracic vertebrae rather than demi facet you are having a one complete facet in upper part that means the corresponding rib uh, which is going to make a joint here is the first rib and the first rib is making joint with a single vertebrae and this surface of the first rib is not having any kind of the division which are the feature of a typical ribs so here you can see that there are two part of this area upper part and lower part which are divided but when you will see the first rib you don't have such division now on the lower border of first thoracic vertebrae you are having the demi facet now if you will see the other typical thoracic vertebrae 
you will find that the body of that thoracic vertebrae is having demi facet on upper part as well as on lower part. So my dear friends, you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are talking about the costovertebral joint or the joint between the head of the rib and the vertebrae, you have to keep in mind that the typical rib is having two facet and these facets are going to make a joint with the demi facets which are present on the adjacent vertebrae. But in case of first rib, the head is not having such kind of the division and this head is making a joint directly with the first thoracic vertebrae. That means first thoracic vertebrae is not having any articulation with C7 vertebrae. Now, the lower rib facet articulates with the upper costal facet of its own vertebrae and the upper rib facet articulate with the lower costal facet of vertebrae above. What does it mean? That there are two vertebrae and there is a one rib. Now, if you will see this image, what you are able to understand that there are two costal facets on the adjacent vertebrae and this is going to make a joint with a single rib. Now you have to identify, suppose this is your fourth rib. Now the question is, what is the number of these two thoracic vertebrae? So now the important thing which you have to understand that this upper demi facet of lower vertebrae is articulating with the numerically same rib. So if this is a fourth rib, then it has to be the fourth thoracic vertebrae and this facet is articulating with the third thoracic vertebrae, clear? And the most easiest way to understand this counting is not with the help of the vertebral body. You should keep this in easier way with the help of transverse process. Now the important concept is that the transverse process facet always articulate with the same number rib. What does it mean? That suppose I am having rather than suppose rather than labeling it as a fourth if you have the question if it is a if it is a sixth rib suppose this is a sixth rib then what is the number of this thoracic vertebrae so you have to keep this thing in mind that if it is a sixth rib then the transverse process has to be of sixth thoracic vertebrae so automatically this will become the t6 and this will become T5. So there should be no confusion when you are identifying the ribs and the vertebrae and for that rather than keeping this thing in mind, you should keep this formula in mind that whenever you are articulating the rib, you have to keep in mind that the rib always articulate with the same number vertebrae that is the transverse process on its transverse process. So first you will check out the transverse process and if it is a sixth then it is six and the upper one become the fifth because its transverse process is free. It is not making joint with this rib and you know that transverse process will allow the joint with a single rib. So now if you will see this is statement, the statement is saying that lower rib facet, lower rib facet. Now this is the facet of the head of the rib which are two upper facet and the lower facet of the rib. Articulate with the upper costal facet of its own vertebrae. So costal facet of its own vertebrae means that if you will see the, the facets what you are able to understand that this is the upper costal facet, this is the lower costal facet of vertebrae not the rib and when you will see the rib Rib is having, now this is the rib which is having two facet, this is upper facet and this is lower facet of the head of the rib. So there are four facets we are talking about, two facets of the head of the rib and two facets of the vertebrae. Now this facet, this facet of vertebrae is known as lower facet of this vertebrae and this facet 
is labeled as upper facet of this vertebrae. Now, when you are articulating, how you are articulating that upper facet of this vertebrae articulating with the lower facet of numerically same number rib. Clear? So, this is the same thing is written that lower rib facet articulate with the upper costal facet of its own vertebrae which are numerically same and the upper facet of the rib that is the lower costal facet of vertebrae above. So, sometimes the student will get confused with this statement that is why I always suggest that you should keep this thing in mind that the transverse process always give articulation to a single rib and the num numbering of transverse process it is always numerically equivalent to the number of the rib which is going to articulate. Clear? So, the typical rib articulate with the body of the numerically corresponding vertebrae and also with the body of next higher not lower it is higher. So, if it is a fourth rib it will articulate with the fourth thoracic vertebrae and third thoracic vertebrae. Clear? The ridge between the two is attached to the intervertebral disc by a ligament which is intra-articular ligament. So, here you can see that this is a intra-articular ligament and this intra-articular ligament one side attached to the disc and one side attached on the ridge and this ligament is dividing the joint cavity into the upper and lower part. Now, suppose you have this image in exam and you have the question that identify. Now, for the identification if I will say that this is the fourth rib, then what is the number of these two vertebrae? Now, again I have to go with the same formula that if this is a fourth rib, then the transverse process which will come here on the posterior side is of the same vertebrae. So, it is become T4 and it is one higher. So, it will become T3. Suppose you have a vice versa question. Now, suppose you have the question vice versa that if this is a sixth thoracic vertebrae, then what is the number of the rib? So, you have to again keep this thing in mind that this is the transverse process which is posteriorly is having a joint with the numerically same rib. So, if it is a T6 then this will become 6th rib and then this is T6 so automatically this will become T5 clear. So, you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are having such questions in exam it will become easy to remember with the help of transverse process. And here now you can make this statement that the lower facet of the head of the rib is articulating with the upper facet on the body of your thoracic vertebrae. While the upper facet of the rib articulate with the lower facet of the next higher one thoracic vertebrae. Clear? Now, we have the another question about the variety. Now, when you will see the costovertebral joint, it is a plain synovial joint and the joint cavity is divided by intra-articular joint which I just told you there is a ligament. Now, apart from that because it is a synovial joint, so you know that synovial joints are having characteristic feature of capsule. So, but obviously every joint which is between the head of the rib and side of the thoracic vertebrae covered by a fibrous capsule and this capsule attached along the margin. Now, in this image, you can see that this green color circles are the joint capsule and these joint capsules are the capsules of this joint which is known as the joint between the head of rib and the body that is known as costovertebral joint. Now, the next ligament is the radiate ligament. Radiate ligament is also known as triradiate ligament as the name itself suggesting that this ligament is made up of three bands. Now, it connects the anterior margin of the head. Now, this is the important thing that this ligament is present on the anterior aspect of the joint and it reinforces the joint from anterior side. So, here you can see that this is the anterior part of the head. Now, from this anterior margin of the head of the rib, 
it will connect with the three different direction with the vertebrae. So what is the direction? When you will see the upper bend, it attaches to the side of the vertebral body above. So this is your side of the vertebral body with the upper band. Then you will have the lower band. Lower band attaches to the side of the vertebral body below. So it will go below. And we have the middle band. Now this middle band is sometimes are known as hypochondral bow and it runs in the midline deep to the anterior longitudinal ligament. You know that here we have a anterior longitudinal ligament which is running in the throughout length of your vertebral column. Now this band which is middle in nature will go and make a circle and it will go towards the opposite side and in this space you have the intervertebral disc. So some part of the ligament merge with the intervertebral disc and it will go towards the opposite side and it is going to make a bow like structure. So in some of the books you will find the name hypochondral bow. So hypochondral bow is nothing but this intermediate part of triradiate ligament is sometimes labeled as a hypochondral bow because it crosses the midline and it connects this side of the joint with opposite side of the joint. So the triradiate ligament is having three bands. Upper band connects with the upper vertebral body, lower band connects with the lower vertebral body and the middle band or intermediate band connects in the midline. Now this is the important thing that the first tenth 11th and 12th, these ribs articulate only with the numerically corresponding vertebrae they are, and they are having a single joint cavity. So initially I told you that when you will see the head of a typical rib, you will find the division by a ridge. But when you will see the head of the first rib, you will find that this head of the first rib is not having any kind of such arrangement by any ridge. So if you will see this diagram, what you are able to appreciate that this is your 11th rib, this is your 12th rib and they are articulating with single vertebrae. Now here in this diagram, this is your 10th rib. Sometimes the some part of the 10th rib will go on the T9. Otherwise the 10th rib is making a joint, the 10th rib is making a joint with T10 vertebrae, 11 is making a joint with the T11 and the 12 rib is making a joint with the T12. So now when you are reading the thoracic vertebrae, you will realize that the thoracic vertebrae are also not compulsorily having the demi facets. They are having complete circular facets and these circular facets are for the vertebrae uh, ribs like 11th, 12th and in upper part if you are having the ribs here you can see this is horizontally placed rib this is the first and this is the second. Now again when you will see this first thoracic vertebrae on the side of first thoracic vertebrae you will find one and half facet. Now why one and half facet? Because one facet, one complete circular facet for the first rib and this half lower facet for the second rib. So there is a only single vertebrae which is having one and half. Why one and half? One is for the first rib and half is for the second rib. Otherwise generally you are having the demi facets on the side of vertebral bodies. Clear? So this is the important thing to understand that it is not having the division in their head these are also not having the division at their ha head which is typically present on a your typical rib. Now the next is the costo transverse joint. Now as the name, name suggests it is a joint between the rib and the transverse process. Now which part of the rib? Answer is tubercle of the rib. Now when you will see the rib on the posterior side you will have a projection is known as tubercle. Now this tubercle is making a joint with the facet on the anterior aspect of transverse process and that joint is known as costo transverse joint. Now what is the uh, uh, type of uh, this joint? So these joints are again plain variety of synovial joint and there is no costo transverse joint 
on 11th and 12th rib. Now, this is again the question for your exam that which of the following thoracic vertebrae does not have the facet on their, their transverse process? Answer is 11th and 12th. So, if I will say in single line that what is the type of the joints formed by a posterior end of the ribs? The question is what is the type of joints formed by the posterior end of the ribs? The answer is plain variety of synovial joint because both costovertebral as well as costotransverse are plain synovial joint in nature. Now here in this diagram also you can appreciate that this green color rib is the 10th rib. But as you will go down, you can see that these two transverse process are having a very far, they are very farly, far placed. There is a quite distance between these two. That means the 11th and 12th floating ribs are not having any connection with the transverse processes. So you have to keep this thing in mind that the 11th and 12th rib, they are connected with the thoracic vertebrae only at the body, not at the transverse process. Clear? Now, what are the ligaments of costotransverse joint? So again, you have to understand that costotransverse joint is a synovial joint. So it is having its capsule. Apart from that, there are three ligaments. One is known as superior costotransverse, inferior costotransverse and lateral costotransverse. Now, when you will see the superior costotransverse, now this ligament is having the two lamina which extends from the neck of the lower border of the process to the vertebrae above. So, it connects the rib with the vertebrae above. It is not going downward. So, here you can see that it is starting from this point and then it is going in upward direction. So, the superior costotransverse, the word, the prefix is there is superior. That means the direction is in upward. So, it is not having the relation post lower down. This superior costotransverse which is placed on the upper part of the joint is a connection with the upper border of the neck and it is made up of two bands or you can say two lamina. Clear? Then you have the inferior costotransverse. It extends from the rough posterior surface of the neck of the rib to the anterior surface of the transverse process of numerically corresponding vertebrae. And then you will have lateral costotransverse which extend from the non-articular part of the tubercle of the tip of transverse process of corresponding vertebrae. So wha what are the three costotransverse ligament? One is the superior costotransverse ligament. Now here you can see this is the lateral costotransverse ligament and this lateral costotransverse ligament is a connection between the tip of the transverse process with the non-articular part of your tubercle. But it is a numerically same rib. And you have the inferior costotransverse ligament which extends from the lower part of its border and it will go downward. So you have three things in mind here. What are the three things? That costotransverse joint are not uniform. That means every rib is not having the costotransverse joint. What are the exception? 11th and 12th. What is the second thing? Costotransverse joint is a plain synovial joint which are supported by three costotransverse ligament. Superior, middle, or inferior and lateral. The third thing which is very commonly asked question that the tubercle of the rib is divided into the two part articular and non-articular. Now when you will see the tubercle of the rib it is divided into the two part articular and non-articular. What is the difference? The articular part is making a joint with the transverse process but non-articular part what is the function of non-articular part of the rib? Tubercle. So, answer is that this non-articular part uh, give attachment to the lateral costotransverse ligament. So, these are the three important things about the costotransverse ligament. Now, here also you can see that these are the non-articular part of the tubercle. And on opposite side, you can see the attachment of this white color band 
विच इज ए लैटरल कॉस्टो ट्रांसफर्स लिगामेंट सो दिस इज वॉट अबाउट द कॉस्टो ट्रांसफर्स लिगामेंट नाउ दिस इज द क्वेश्चन विच आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द ट्यूबरकल ऑफ ए टिपिकल रिब हैज टू फैसेट्स द ट्यूबरकल इज ऑल्सो डिवाइडेड इन टू द टू पार्ट वन इज आर्टिकुलर विच इज यू कैन सी एंड दिस रफ एरिया एडजस्टेंट टू इट इज नोन एज नॉन आर्टिकुलर so the medial facet covered by the hyaline cartilage that's why it is white you can see here and articulate with the tip of articulate with the tip of the transverse process of its own vertebrae while the lateral facet is non articular and it provide attachment to the lateral costo transverse ligament now what are the joints on anterior aspect Now, when you will approach anteriorly, you have the joint is known as costochondral. What is the meaning of costochondral? The costo means rib, chondral means cartilage. Now, this joint is between the costal cartilage and the rib, and these are primary cartilaginous joint. So, this is again the question of your exam. Now, where is the costochondral joint? Now, this is the anterior view. These are the anterior end of your ribs, and you can see that this area. is your costal cartilage so where is the junction the junction is here so this line is known as costochondral joint now this costochondral joint is a primary cartilaginous joint then you will have interchondral joint now interchondral means the joint between the adjacent costal cartilage which are nearer to each other and such joints are start from the sixth costal cartilage so you will have if you will count this this is the first second third fourth fifth sixth so this is our sixth costal cartilage now below that you have seven below that you will have eight then nine and 10 so the joint is formed and the 11 and 12 is not here because they are floating ribs so the joint will form between the 6 and 7 between the 7 and 8 8 and 9 and 9 and 10 so the joint are there between the costal cartilages of 6 and 7 7 and 8 8 and 9 and 9 and 10 now the question is that these joints are plain synovial joint though they are the joint between the cartilages but still they are plain synovial now this is very commonly asked question because students think that the joints between the cartilage should be of cartilaginous variety but it is uh, it is not cartilaginous they are plain variety they are synovial variety the exception is the last joint the last joint between the 9th and 10th costal cartilage is fibrous in nature so the joint between 6 and 7 7 and 8 and 8 and 9 are synovial in variety while the joint between 9 and 10 is fibrous in nature then you have the sternochondral now sternochondral means that this is your sternum and this is your costal cartilage so the joints are known as sternochondral joints so how many sternochondral joints you are able to see one if you will see the counting this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 so there are seven sternochondral joint but the question comes about the type now here you have to understand that first sternochondral joint that means the joint between the costal cartilage of first rib and this lateral aspect of manubrium is a primary cartilaginous joint it is a primary cartilaginous joint then what about the remaining joints so from second to seven there are joints which are plain variety of synovial joint they are plain variety of synovial joint and you know that primary cartilaginous joints are known as synchondrosis they are known as synchondrosis so now if i am having a question write down the joints formed by first rib write down the joints which are formed by the first rib so this is the first rib so how will you write in exam this is the first joint on the posterior side and what is the name of this joint costo vertebral joint that is between the head of the first rib and the side of the first thoracic vertebrae 
and this joint is a plain synovial joint which is not divided and the head is articulating with the single vertebrae. What is this joint? This is known as costo transverse joint between the tubercle of the first rib and the transverse process of first thoracic vertebrae. Then what is this joint? Now this joint is the first costochondral joint and the first costochondral joint is primary cartilaginous. What is this joint? This is first chondrosternal joint and this is again primary cartilaginous joint. So in nutshell you will find that first rib is having both plain synovial posteriorly and both first uh, anteriorly primary cartilaginous joints. But when we are talking about other ribs, in other ribs the posterior joints are plain synovial but in anterior part these joints are the primary cartilaginous but this junction, the junction between the your cartilage and the sternum is plain variety of synovial joint. So this is the question which you have to understand. So, so many times you have this question that what is the difference between the junction or the joint of first costal cartilage and your uh, sternum with other costal cartilages. So this joint of first costal cartilage is primary while other are synovial. So this is a primary cartilaginous joint and these are synovial. Now the second question is that the synovial cavity of second costal cartilage and sternum is divided. Why? Because the two part are there, one is with the manubrium and one is with the body. So this joint cavity is having the division, remaining joint cavities are single cavities remaining joint cavities are single cavities. So this is the important thing that the second to seventh sternochondral joints are plain variety of synovial joint with single cavity except the second one which is divided. Why? Because it is articulating at two bones. Now what are the joints of sternum? Now when you will see the joints of sternum, you have manubrio sternal joint and you have ziphy sternal joint. You know that the injunction, junction between the manubrium and the sternum is known as manubrio sternal and this is known as the joint between the sternum and ziphoid. Now this joint is a secondary cartilaginous joint but this joint is a primary cartilaginous joint. So this is the important question in your exam that what is the difference between the variety of the joint. So manubrio sternal is a secondary cartilaginous joint which is also known as symphysis while the ziphy sternal joint is a synchondrosis or you can say primary cartilaginous joint. That means the ziphy sternal joint is having tendency to convert in the bone and that process is known as synostosis and it convert into the bone generally by the age of 40 years. Now you have posteriorly joints in the thoracic cavity and these are the joints between the adjacent vertebrae and these joints are at three places. Each vertebrae is making a joint in upper part and lower part. So in upper part it is making three joint, in lower part it is making three joint. So what are the three joint? One is mid midline joint or the median joint and that median joint is known as symphysial in variety or secondary cartilaginous joint where you have the intervertebral disc which is made up of fibrocartilage. Then the side or laterally placed joints, these laterally placed joints are the joints between the adjacent articular processes which are right and left and these are also known as Z joint or zygapophysial joint. Now in this image you can appreciate these joint. Now this is one vertebrae. Now this one vertebrae is making a three joint with the upper vertebrae and three joint with the lower vertebrae. So what are the three joint with upper vertebrae? This is intervertebral disc, so this is the one joint and this is a secondary cartilaginous joint and this uh, intervertebral disc is made up of fibrocartilage. Then you will have the 
two superior articular facet, you have the two inferior articular facet. So, you have the right and left joint here and right and left joint here. In the same way, you will have one more disc here. So, what you will realize that these two joints of the body are secondary cartilaginous in nature, but these joints are synovial in variety. These joints are plain synovial in variety. So, this is the question in your exam that what is the type of joints formed by a vertebrae. So, if you will see the vertebrae, it is making a synovial joint here with the head of the rib. It is making a secondary cartilaginous joint with the adjacent body. It is making a synovial joint here again with the adjacent vertebrae articular process. It is making a joint here on the transverse process which is again plain variety of synovial joint. Clear? So, at the end of this class, now you are able to understand that what do you mean by the joints of the thorax? What are the different types of the joint formed by the thorax? And you have the different kind of the questions like what are the type of the joints formed by the first rib? How will you differentiate the thoracic vertebrae? What is the number, joints formed by the transverse process and the tubercle of the rib? What are the types of the joints formed by the anterior end of the ribs? So, this is what you should know before you start reading this topic in your book. So, this is all for the class. Thank you.